I'm making a small ladle and the parts were, this part was thrown on the wheel. It was a small bowl that I turned over and trimmed so that it was smooth. And then I went and squeezed it into an oval shape. So this is gonna be the spoon part and then I'm gonna hand build a handle from a pattern. So I've rolled this piece of clay out um, on a piece of plastic so that the clay is stuck to the plastic. So when I threw my slab out, I laid it down on plastic with it on either side and then took a rolling pin and rolled it out nice and thin. So it's between an eighth and a sixteenth of an inch thick. So it's very thin and I've laid the, plast or laid the clay out to dry for a little bit. So it's, it's a little wetter than leather hard. Then I'm gonna draw a pattern using a piece of paper for the handle. So I've folded the paper in half and I'm gonna draw on the fold. And so I have to think about how big I want the handle to be in comparison to my spoon. So the shape of the handle is gonna look like this. So I cut this out. This will be my handle. So I'm gonna lay it on my clay and I'm gonna cut all the way through the plastic. So I have my pattern shape that is clay stuck to plastic. So the plastic is stuck to the outside here. And um, the reason for using it is if, if I were to make this without the plastic, it's really hard to make a long, thin tube. This is gonna be a hollow handle. And this would be a difficult thing to throw um, and also a difficult thing to hand build if the plastic were not attached to it. So this will bend really symmetrically and hold its shape without cracking. So I'm gonna smooth out the edges. And then when I roll this into my hollow handle shape, one side of the seam will go under and then the other side will go over. So this is the side that's gonna go under. So I'm using my thumb to thin out the edge. And then this side will go over and you'll see this. So I wanna smooth this edge cause it'll be visible when it's done. And then I'm gonna try to roll it evenly on either side. So when I, when I thinned that edge, it also pulled away from the plastic slightly. If that doesn't happen, then you want to pull back the plastic on the edge here so you don't get it stuck inside the seam accidentally. So I'm just pulling this back from the edge so that I can score the part that goes underneath. And then I'm going to turn it around and score this part that goes over. Add a little water. Now I'm gonna start at the top. So this will be the part where it attaches to the spoon. And this is the top. So the challenge with this shape is that you can't get your hand or a tool very easily on the inside when you get toward the end. So as I work my way down, I'm gonna close the seam and try to smooth it out on the inside as much as I can. At this point, if I wanted to, I could use a tool, a round wooden tool or something to push against it from the inside. But the further down you go, the harder it is to do that. So I'm working my way down. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm gonna close this off so then I have air trapped on the inside. Once the air is trapped in there, it's easier to push against it because it holds its shape. 
And then I'm going to try to seal the seam before I move on. Okay, now I'm going to peel the plastic off. And finish shaping it. So if I did a good job rolling out my slab, then you don't see very many wrinkles. But anything that's left from it being rolled on plastic, I'll smooth out with a sponge. Okay, then I'm going to bend this to make it the shape that I want. So I'm, this is going to have kind of a curve to it. So I'm going to bend it a little bit and then this end I want to have a curl on the end. So I'm going to further shape this. Maybe flatten this out a little bit. Okay, so now I have my ladle or spoon handle. And then I have to make a piece that connects these two together. So I'm going to make, I'm just going to use a piece of clay to make really like a miniature pinch pot or a pinch method to make it anyway. Okay, so this part's going to get scored and attached to the bottom, and then I'm going to cut a hole in the top where the handle will fit in. I found that this is best really wet. Um, so I attach these parts together right away and then let it dry and I don't touch it until I load it into the bisque kiln. These are so fragile before they're fired that I think the best way is just to make it and then leave it alone until you load it in the kiln. Okay, so this part will attach to here. So I score here, score here. And then I press this down over the edge on either side. Okay, and then score the inside of this and the outside of my handle. And then attach the handle. And so you can see how fragile and wet it is. And so usually what I do is find a place to set it. So I'll get a bat so that I don't have to move it again until it gets loaded into the bisque. I get a bat and take a piece of foam and roll it up and then lay it over it. So I guess I could do it with a towel. So I lay this over here so that it's easier to handle and won't get ruined. So once it's on here, then I can go back and fix up this edge. Because the handle is hollow, it needs a hole in it so that it won't explode when it's bisque fired. So I'll use my needle tool to put a hole in it underneath where you can't see it. And then the trick with spoons is how to fire them in the kiln. So usually the way I do it is I'll have a kiln post standing up and then I'll, I'll fire it with the handle on top of a post. So you have to imagine here's the kiln post 
and I'll put a stilt right here and a stilt down at the bottom. And that's a way to prop it up for firing. <laughs> 